Yeah, it's on. It's on. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all bear, bear with us. We, we, got, we got some new sound equipment we're, we're dealing with, so please bear, bear with us. Do you need to have her use my mic? You want, you want her to use my mic? There we go. Hey, I'll tell you what. Tracy, there you go. Anyway, I was all cloud on. I was super excited, like bouncing around. Like I said, not only did God hit my goal, he exceeded it. Um, and then, again, on Thursday night, we had the 60 kids, so we hit it multiple days. Super excited. But because of all that, I have a ton of people to thank. Um, my teachers, my volunteers, the people who worked with the kids, moved them from room to room. My kitchen staff was phenomenal. Miss Jennifer had dinner every night. <laughs> yeah, that's a blessing. We, one more thing, you don't have to worry about feeding your family. She had it covered and made all my favorite desserts. Um, but anyway. Next Sunday is Donuts with Dad, for Dad, however you want to call it. That's just my title. Basically, it's a Father's Day breakfast for all men and kids. Girls, little girls, bring your daddies, your grandpas. You can come eat too. But it'll be in the church lobby um, at 845. So that's for all men. It will be a full breakfast, not just a donut. Um, so come join us then. Uh, next Wednesday night. Kids and youth are joining together this summer for all the summer fun activities, and we're having a pool party at my father-in-law's house, Eddie Goodson, um, but that is also open for the church, because I told all my VBS teachers and workers, come join us too. Come, you don't have to swim if you don't want to, you can just hang out by the pool, enjoy some homemade ice cream, but we'll do that from 6 to 8 p.m. next Wednesday. Uh, last thing, because our VBS this year was uh, mid like medieval theme nights and stuff, we're going to take a trip down to Myrtle Beach to see medieval times. Uh, we want to show the kids, you know, what knights fighting on horses looks like. You know, it'll be fun. But that is also open for the entire church. I have to have at least 15 people to get the group rate. It is a matinee show. But if you want to go online and check the prices of their nighttime shows, it's normally about $70 per adult. That is not including any extras. For $34.50, you get your full meal, the full show, a cheering banner, taxes, server tips, everything is included. Um, but I need to know in two weeks. So you have till June 25th to let me know if you are interested in going. Some people have said they were interested, but they're like, we'll be on vacation. Well, they're on vacation at the beach, so it works out. You can come join us. <laughs> we don't have a bus anymore to get everybody down there. So whether you're here or there, you'll have to come up with your own transportation. My car holds eight. That's a, I can take a few. Um, but you can meet us down there. We're going to, it's Joy Lunch. It's 1130 show. It's like, it's a matinee. That's how we get the special deal. But like I said, if you're interested, let me know. Got to get at least 15 people. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. And on that note, real quick, since we got what, church members at the pool party, and then maybe, you know, we got community changes going on this week. Um, it, it's a big community. We've got several of our church members a part of it. We've got a few of our youth going to be there. So because that's all going on this week, i got no Wednesday night activities, ministries this, this week. So no, no Wednesday nights this week whatsoever, all right? So be praying for us, praying for community changers. And as Tracy said, I said this Thursday night, this was probably the most enjoyable vacation Bible school I've ever been a part of. It was just, there was just something about it. It was just a great spirit. Um, Y'all should have seen the fellowship hall just decorated. It looked like a castle. It was just amazing. <laughs> so, anyways, um, and uh, Jeff and Robin were, were amazing. Their groups, they're doing the motions, everything like that, and everything. <laughs> so, anyways, all praise to God. Next week, uh, Father's Day, but please, uh, we're going to honor all of our men. Uh, invite, as always, God's word. God has a word for all of us, whether it's um, for men, for fathers, but for all of us. So, please 
invite those around you for Father's Day next Sunday. Yeah, I tried to do motions, but I don't know. I, I was always doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. And uh, so I thought we'd do motions this morning. How about that? <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Morning has broken, and Jesus is Lord. And so we want to worship him this morning in everything we do, everything we say, everything we think. So will you stand as we sing together, I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I want to do. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. Sing it again. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I want to do. I wave you praise, for you are my righteousness. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as i go feasting on the riches of his grace resting neath his sheltering wing always looking on his smiling face that is why i shout and sing Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that
time of just um, pointing children to Jesus and the, the gospel. And I thank you, Lord, for those you brought, drew unto yourself. Oh, we pray for the seeds of these children's hearts that they would grow and that many would turn to you and all of them would turn to you and know Jesus and their families, Lord, would take s- steps closer and deeper in their walk and their love for you. Father, this, this week, our own Southern Baptist Convention is meeting in New Orleans, and I know that you have me here in our own community, but I want to just pray for our convention um, in this time that we would just be Christ-centered. Uh, Father, we get so caught up in so many things that divide us. Help us to get back to the gospel, the, the joining you on mission, that this is a, a, a decaying world, that people are going to hell. So I pray, Father, that this week there will just be a revival, a, a spiritual awakening of people just repenting, crying out to you, and getting back on mission with you. And Father, we pray for our nation in, in this turbulent times of, of darkness and evil and the evil forces wanting to grab the hearts of, of our children and our next generation. Father, would you just strengthen us as your church to be bold and sharing the good news, to not compromise, but Lord, meeting people where they are, just helping them to know that Jesus is the light of the world. He's the bread of life. He came not to condemn the world, but to save the world, as he said in his own words. So, Father, we just pray for a spiritual awakening of sweeping through our nation. And this morning, Father, continue to stir our hearts, lift our eyes and fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, the perfecter, and the finisher of our faith. We give you the glory and the greatness. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. Will you sing with me again? We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and worship his name. his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Let's pray. 
Amen. Amen. If you've got a Bible this morning, I'm going to be in Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14, as you're turning and finding Joshua chapter 14. You know, my, I, my Aunt Annetta, who's gone home to be with the Lord, she was a big collector of antiques. And, and I remember going to her house, and she'd have all these neat little heirlooms and old, old items. And I bet some of y'all probably like antiques. There's just something about antique items, items you can't get anymore. And, you know, even on, on social media, they have these, these sites and accounts that are devoted to um, retro items, you know. And I'm not talking about items hundreds of years ago. I'm talking about toys 50 years ago, you know, uh, Dr. Pepper bottles. You know, there's something neat and intriguing about s- some old item that you can't get anymore. And people will bid, and they'll pay outrageous money. They'll out- try to outbid each other on one of these little items. If you've got a, uh, an old comic book from 1938 or, or an old relic Coke bottle from the early 20th century, it's just amazing of how people just, just are ooh and ah, and, and they, they find so much value of just trying to obtain one of these old items that you can't find anymore. But if you were to put before somebody an 85-year-old man or a 90-year-old woman, our culture, our society has our values backwards because we're quickly, too quick to push aside an 85-year-old or 90-year-old human being. It's backwards. Because our senior saints just have much wisdom and faith stories and even faith testimonies about God's faithfulness throughout their lives and their years. And this morning, we're going to see in God's Word about an 85-year-old man who had more vitality, more passion, more strength than most 25-year-olds do. His name is Caleb, and we find this story in Joshua chapter 14. Now, you know, last week we talked about training the, the next generation. I was seeking the Lord this week. I didn't know what to preach this coming Sunday. We're kind of in the middle of between finishing a sermon series and getting ready to start one maybe next month. And And I just was seeking the Lord, and then he laid out of my heart a message about the value of the strength of our senior saints. And this message is not just for our senior saints to encourage you, but those of us who might have a few years before we get there, what a great word, a great goal, a great reminder about becoming that man or woman of passion, of vitality that we find in Caleb's life. Now let me set the, the stage up. Now Joshua is, is the story, God has raised up Joshua, he's, he's, he's taken over Moses' role, and they've come into the promised land, and by chapter 14 they've conquered the land now. The land is ready to be distributed amongst the 12 tribes, all right? But in chapter 14, a blast from the past shows up in, from Joshua's life, a man by the name of Caleb. And y'all maybe have seen those TV shows where, where, where somewhere... Somebody from the past that hadn't made an appearance in a long time all of a sudden appears. It's kind of what's happening here. But it's important to understand the background of what happens even before Joshua 14. And if you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1, the Lord God through his servant Moses sends out 12 spies to go ahead and and spy out and scope out the land to be conquered. And the 12 spies come back. And Moses says, well, well, what's the report? What's it look like? And ten of the spies say, man, we can't do it. Man, they got these giant people in there. We're like little grasshoppers. Man, we just can't do it. They're just just too many. They're too big. But there's two spies, Joshua and Caleb. And they say, no, we can take it. Man, we got the Lord God on our side. God's given us. It's ripe to be taken. Let's go and, 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 and conquer the land. And the people are ready to stone Caleb and, and Joshua. And they don't go in. And the Lord God says, okay, those ten spies, your lack of faith, you're not entering the promised land. You're going to die before the land's conquered. But my two servants, Joshua and Caleb, They're going to live to see. Not only will they live to see the conquering of the land, they're going to get to go and come in and conquer the land 
and get a piece of the inheritance of the land. So here it is now, 45 years later, Caleb's 80, 85 years old. He comes, shows up to his buddy Joshua. He says, hey, God made this great promise. I'm ready to get my land. But we, as you listen to Caleb's words, I mean, Caleb has this vitality, this passion, this strength as an 85-year-old man. And how does he have that? How can he do that? Well, let's first read, read the Word of God. I'm in the New American Standard. You can listen along or look in your own translation. Joshua chapter 14, beginning of verse 6. Then the sons of Judah drew near to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord God spoke to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought word back to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt with fear. But I followed the Lord my God fully. And so Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden will be an inheritance to you and to your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God fully. Now behold, the Lord has let me live, just as he spoke these 45 years from the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses when Israel walked in the wilderness. And now behold, I am 85 years old today. I am still as strong today as I was in the day Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so my strength is now for war and for going out and coming in. Now then, give me this hill country about which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on that day that Anakim were there with great fortified cities. Perhaps the Lord will be with me, and I will drive them out as the Lord has spoken. So Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. Therefore, Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, until this day, because he followed the Lord God of Israel fully. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, this is your word. We thank you for your word. I thank you for the joy and privilege of preaching your word. Father, prepare our hearts to receive your word, to hear your word, and to go and be doers of your word. And I pray, Father, that your word would have its perfect will and way in each of our lives, first and foremost, my own. Lord, I cling to you and rely on the power of your word and on the cleverness of mine. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so here's Caleb. He, he shows up. It's, it's an old, his old buddy Joshua. And now we know what happened to Joshua. Joshua was raised up by God to be the leader now of the Israelites to conquer the land. And Caleb begins to relate the story, going back to the good old days when, when they came back with this report. They knew that the land could be conquered. And you know, Caleb's faith, his confidence of wanting to conquer the land, that's a picture of the Christian life. And what I mean is that so often, God, when we get saved, we turn from our sins and turn to Jesus. God intends us to have this abundant life, this abundant life of joy, of peace. But too often, we, we uh, live a life of, of unbelief. We, we live a life of, of spiritual defeat. And we let depression, being defeated, and being distressed just deflate us. And notice that Caleb was also from the tribe of Judah, David's tribe, leading eventually to the Messiah, Jesus. But I want you to notice that there in the passage we see this, there's a phrase that's used again and again about Caleb, that he followed the Lord his God fully. Some translations say he wholly followed the Lord. Six times we find the Old Testament Refer to Caleb in this way. He wholly followed the Lord. He followed the Lord wholly. And what it means is it, that was a word used by hunters, and it means, to, it means to close the gap. And a hunter, in following their prey, 
would try to keep a distance and close in on that prey. So in the same way it's, re it's referring to here in the Hebrew, that Caleb tried to keep that gap close between him and the Lord. He didn't want to let that gap get too far. It was wholly following him very closely. 85 years old, full of passion, full of vitality, full of this strength, that he wholly followed the Lord all of his life. He followed the Lord fully. How did he do it? How in the world can we have that? Whether we're maybe in our 80s, maybe in our 90s, or maybe those of us who've got a few years, how could we have that same passion, vitality, strength that Caleb did? There's three keys I want to point you to from God's Word this morning. That the strength that Caleb had, man, the strength that God has given to his people. Three keys I want to point you to this morning. First, number one, Caleb was able to have this strength, this passion, this vitality because he remembered. He remembered God's past promises. He remembered God's past promises. Now we see this in verses 6 to 9. Here he is, and again, it says there, he speaks to his old buddy Joshua, and he, he says, hey, Joshua, remember, remember the word the man of Moses spoke concerning you and me? He says, remember, I, I was 40 years old, and, and, and Moses sent me to spy out the land, and I brought to him what I, what I saw, in, it was in my heart. And he says, remember our fellow spies? And their report made the people melt with fear, made them shake their knees. He says, but, 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 but Moses swore on that day that, that the land on which your foot is trodden will be an inheritance to you and to your children because you have followed the Lord your God fully. You see, Caleb's confidence was in the word of God. He remembered God's promise to him, what God had, had given to him, just clear as day. And, and, and the faith that he had, that conviction, we find that described in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the, the, the definition of what faith is. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That's what Caleb had. He had this, this conviction, didn't he? He had this conviction, this, this faith, not seeing it, but, but this confidence. And Caleb remembered the Lord God's word to him. After he, he came back with that report, just confident what God was going to do, here's what the Lord God said to him. This is the promise that he held on to. Deuteronomy 1, verse 35. Not one of these men of this evil generation shall see the good land that I swore to give your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it, and to him and to his children I will give the land on which he has trodden, because he has wholly followed the Lord. Now, did you catch exactly what he was saying? Did you catch those words? It's easy to overlook this. The Lord God was saying, hey, my two faith champions who saw beyond just what their eyes saw, they had eyes of faith. I'm going to give them the land. Did you hear how he referred to the others? Not one of these men of this evil generation. Folks, what a warning to you and I. We need to be careful. We start hindering God's work and God has new doors and opportunities of he's trying to work and move. And we get in that, 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 that old habit. Well, I don't know about that. No. Well, we got to be careful. And not having that faith. These men of this evil generation, that's God's word, not my word, God's word. Caleb's faith had not wavered. He had this confidence. He remembered God's past promises. And senior saints, your journey that goes before us, God has given you past promises. He's given you past promises in your past, not to live in the past, but to remember, oh yeah. I remember a 15-year-old when I got saved at camp. I remember when I, was, when I was in my early 20s and I just didn't know if I could just survive as a young mother. And God met me there. God spoke to me in his word. His past promises, remembering his past promises. Remembering his faithfulness. There's a modern worship song. It's called The Goodness of God. And I remember last summer, my son and I, Trevor, went to Camp McCall up in way upstate. And every night we had worship going on. And this song they sang almost every night. 
And the song says, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. He remembered God's past promises, number one. All right, but secondly, how did Caleb have this passion? How did he have this vitality? How did he have this strength? He recognized. He recognized his present condition. He recognized his present condition. Now, in verses 10 to 11, he recognized what was going on in him, around him. Verse 10, he says, Now behold, the Lord has let me live just as he spoke these 45 years from the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses. And now behold, he says, I'm 85 years old today. He recognized that God had given him the day, those, those days, those years as a gift. You know, we spoke about that last year. Remember, we went through Ecclesiastes last summer. And remembering that, that every day is a gift. And we need to recognize, man, God's let me live this long. Man, what a great God. Give me the gift of today. He recognized that, but he goes on there too. He says, I am still as strong today as I was in the day Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so my strength is now. He had this, this strength. You know, I was looking on social media this morning as I got up, and there was this clip of the Hall of Fame pitcher, Nolan Ryan. And Nolan Ryan showed this, this was just recently. You know, he's 76 years old, and I guess he threw out the first pitch at the beginning of some baseball game. Here's a 76-year-old Nolan Ryan. And he just whips that, that, that fastball. And the catcher that caught it, man, he was kind of shaking his hand like that. A 76-year-old man being able to whip that fastball like that still. You know, our world, our world values physical strength. They value physical appearance. And they placed little emphasis or value on spiritual strength. And what Caleb had going for him is he had this spiritual strength. That's what he had going for him. He had this spiritual strength. He recognized what he had. And if we're all honest, there are times we recognize, and I don't have, my spiritual strength is not so great. My spiritual strength is not so strong. But what do we do then? We do what the Apostle Paul did for the, the church at Colossae. You look at Col Colossians chapter 1, Paul prays this prayer on behalf of the church. Colossians 1 verse 9, he says, For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be, verse 11, strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience. Did you catch that? He prayed for the church to be strengthened with all power. And what was the benefit of it? To attain steadfastness and patience. That describes Caleb to a T. Talk about steadfastness, talk about patience. That's Caleb. And just like Caleb, we've got to have God's perspective and say, God, Strengthen me with all power. Not be afraid, God. Strengthen me with all power according to your glorious might. You know, the, what I've discovered, the, the older you get, life starts to take its toll on you. And you don't get that when you're younger. When you're a teenager, when you're early 20s, maybe even 30s, you don't realize. But the older you get, life starts taking its toll. Physically can't see as well as you used to. You start getting more of those little aches and pains. You know, the, the, Jeff and I were talking about VBS this week, and I, I was doing the, the missions rotation and the, the, the doing all the motions, and I was there with my wife in her room. And I wanted to, this year especially, I was like, you know, I'm going to do the motions. I want these little, these little boys to see a, a grown man doing the motions, not being ashamed of Jesus in that way. It wore me out. Man, it wore me out. But not just physically, but, you know, life as you get older. 
You know, I shared last year during Ecclesiastes, you know, the, the longer you live, the more death you'll experience. And you start having to, to, to bury friends and parents, spouses, some even children. And then also you got the, the financial toll on you. You got the emotional toll and you deal with, with bills you got to pay and, and just dealing with people in life. I remember as a boy, my dad, my dad was a newspaper reader. I mean, he, he, he got two, two newspapers a day. I remember we got the, the early morning Marietta Daily Journal in the morning, and then he'd get the Atlanta Journal in the evening. And on the weekends when he was home, not working, I remember coming in, and he would be there on the couch in his, his, his easy chair, reading the newspaper with his cup of coffee. And I'd be playing, or I'd be eating breakfast, and I'd hear my dad kind of mumble under his breath, man, I can't believe that. Why, you... Oh, man, I, I just would just like to strangle you. And I'm thinking, what's, what's up with Dad? I started realizing that the older I get, my dad was reading about the things you're exposed to as an adult. And you get to be adult and you, you, and, and you find out just how cruel and depraved this, this, this society is, what people do to children, what they do to animals, what they do to one another. It takes its toll. It can really, really take, take its toll the longer you live and you get more aware of these. But what a great word from God. And one of the greatest, most encouraging words I love to turn to, it's in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. And Paul says this. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart. But though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. You know what he's saying? As my body starts to deteriorate, my shoulder injury gets hard. I have the knee that needs the, the, the replacing. I got my gallbladder that needs to be taken out. I'm, I'm, I'm getting up and, and it's hard. I'm get, it's hurting. My, my outer person's decaying. But what's he say? But my inward person is being renewed. It's being strengthened day by day. You know, Paul wrote to young Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, verse 8. He says, for body discipline is only of little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. God says that's where our strength comes from. It comes from not looking at our bodies. I'm deteriorating, God. I'm getting old. I can't see as well. He says, no, we're being renewed. We're being strengthened day by day, in our heart, in our soul. And adversity makes us stronger. We can either get stronger or weaker. I came across an illustration this past week. didn't know this. Shipbuilders, years before, before the, the modern techniques of building a sailboat, what they would do is to, to, to put the big mast, the big mast to the big pole to make the big sail be held in place in a sailboat. Shipbuilders years ago, they'd go to a forest and they'd find that right tree that would be perfect for that to be that mast. And they would clear out all the trees around that tree and they'd let that one tree stay there for a while to get, to get conditioned by the, the storms and the winds. And that tree there by itself being exposed to the winds and the storms would get stronger and stronger and weathered. And had that tree remained with those other trees around it, it wouldn't have gained that strength. It wouldn't have been that strong to become that strong mass to hold that, that sail. Adversity makes us stronger. We all have a choice whether we want to let fear or faith reign in our hearts. That's the key. Caleb let faith reign in his heart. Those ten spies that went in that, that, that promised land, they let fear reign. They saw those, those giants in their eyes. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. But Caleb and Joshua, they, were, they had a big God. Man, we could take them. That's God's God. And you know what? Caleb never made excuses. And God never lets us get away with excuses. You know, when Moses was 80 years old, God called him out. What did he say? 
God, I'm not elegant enough. My, my words, I can't speak clearly. How about Jeremiah? Jeremiah the prophet, not the bullfrog. Remember Jeremiah? Remember what Jeremiah said? Jeremiah said, God, I'm young. How are they going to listen to me? And God said, you just speak what I say to speak and do what I say to do. And what a great encouragement that God has called us to bear fruit even in our later years. It's in God's word. Listen to Psalm 92, verse 14. Psalm 92, verse 14. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. Sorry, Trevor, I'm skipping over that, that, that scripture. And so there you go. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. Bear fruit in old age. Folks, I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why, you know, I went to, to Nicaragua, to, to Honduras three months ago, Central America, went down there with, with Frankie Tanner. Frankie's got 20 years on me. One of the reasons why I love being around Frankie is Frankie, in his early 70s, he's passionate about missions, about the Lord, about the gospel. Here he was down in Central America during the pastor's conference, 73-year-old man. He's bouncing around like this. He's at the... He, at the big crusade, he's bouncing like this. I'm like, man, God, if you give me another 20 years, I want to be able to bounce around like that. I want to have that energy. Caleb had that strength. He had that passion, that vitality. Why? Because he recognized his present condition. It wasn't about his outer man, his outer strength, his inner strength. He was being renewed and strengthened day by day. All right, but third and finally, how did Caleb have this passion, this vitality, this strength? Third and finally, he reached. He reached for what was before him. He reached for what was ahead of him. He reached for what was before him. I love Caleb's blunt, straightforward request. Give me this hill country. You got the King James, he says, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. And I don't know about you, we can't hear Caleb's voice, but I got a hard time believing that Caleb came to, to, to Joshua and said, hey, Joshua, you, give me this mountain. Give me this hill country. I don't think so. Give me this hill country. Give me this mountain. Man, that's a passion I want. That's the vitality I want. If I live to be 85 years old, man, that's what I, that's, that's what I want. He reached for what was before him. And there's a difference between a promise and a possession. Remember, he had God's promises from way back when, for 45 years, but now it was time to possess. Give me that hill country. Give me that mountain. You know, I'm reminded of Paul's words. Philippians 3, verse 13, Paul says, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He says, forgetting what lies behind, I reach forward. Just like Caleb. This past Wednesday, June 7th, would have been my mom's birthday. She would have been 72 years old. And my mom's life verse, I don't think I've told you guys this, and it was even read at her, her service, and she had it on plaques in her, her house, and she's had it inscribed in, on paintings. It's Psalm 121. And the psalmist says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. That's the same idea here. Reaching forward. I lift my eyes. Where's my help come from? It comes from the Lord. I keep my eyes up, forward, reaching for that help. Help comes from the Lord. Caleb was a conqueror. 
Okay? Every one of us has a choice in life. We can coast or we can conquer. We can be a coaster or we can be a conqueror. For my senior saints out there, my senior adults, God has given you this season to conquer. God, give me my mountain. Give me that hill country. You might say, preacher, I don't have the spiritual strength. I can barely get around. When I talk about conquering, I'm not talking about health and wealth. I'm not talking about God's giving you a brand new car to conquer. I'm talking about the abundant life. I'm talking about the task and the assignment that he's got for you today. You say, preacher, what can God use? What can God do in my life? I want to tell you some of the most important work God can use in anybody's life. We need more saints doing this. You pick up the phone. You call somebody and you say, you know what? God laid you on my heart. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. You're able to get in your car. Go see somebody. Go sit down and say, I want to pray with you. Tell them about what God's done in your life. You know what? I want to share with you about what I saw God do me years ago. Folks, that's the most important work I believe that needs to be done today. God has given you this season. And maybe those of us who might not have, we might not be there yet. And if God wills, if God wills me to live to be 85, man, my prayer is that God will give me the gusto. He'll give me that passion of Caleb. God, I pray if you allow me to be 85 years old in this world, if I can't jump like this, still, Lord, just give me that passion to pick up that phone and say, I want to pray with you. I can get in my car and go see somebody and say, I want to pray with you. I want to share about what the Lord's done. I want to share Jesus and tell you about God's son, Jesus. How he saved me from my sin. He's come to save you from yours. Caleb, he reached for what was before him. Some of you may have heard the, the name Sir Edmund Hillary. And Edmund Hillary is known, credited with being the very first man to climb Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world. And he did this in 1953. And there's a famous quote people like to throw around. They say, well, when he was asked why he climbed the mountain, he said, well, because it's there. And that was widely reported. It was reported by the press. But Elmer Towns, who is the uh, pastor, author, who was a close friend of Edmund Hillary, said that was not the case. The press lied back then as they do today. And he said, the truth of the matter is that Edmund Hillary was a godly man who loved the Lord Jesus. And when he was asked why he climbed Mount Everest, he said, I did it for the glory of God. I did it for the glory of God. God had given him a vision of what he wanted to do in his life and through his life. He had a vision of God. You know, just a moment ago, I said that, that Caleb, he followed the Lord wholly. He followed the Lord. He wholly followed the Lord with all of his life. And you know, that points to our Lord and Savior, Jesus. As we saw in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus did not come to abolish the law, but to what? To fulfill the law. He obeyed God's law to a T perfectly. He wholly followed God and his word. And folks, in these days, in this, this day and age, people need to know this lost, dark world around us need to know the hope that's found in Jesus Christ, that God sent his son Jesus to save them from their sins. People need to understand that, that we are all sinners in need of a savior. And Jesus Christ is the only one who could save us from our sins. And God sent him to live a perfect life, to die the death we should have died. He was raised from the dead on a third day, conquering the grave. But he calls for a response that we repent, we acknowledge, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I, I renounce, I repent, I, I, I completely reject my sins and my, my former life, and I throw myself on you, Jesus. I surrender myself to you. And this lost world needs to know that we are still in a season of grace. This is still a season of grace. This world is dark. It's fallen because of the fall. You know, when Jesus said this, and I know many of us have our hearts and focus on this these days. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 6 to 8, 
He said, you'll be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened. For those things must take place, but that is not the end yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. And the lost world needs to know that the hope is found in Christ. He is the light of the world. He is the one who shines in the darkness. And now is the time for people to get right with God. And now is the time for God's church, God's people, his senior saints, his younger saints. Man, to be renewed, to be strengthened, to be confident, to be faith champions, to be spiritual champions. Saying, I know that the world is dark, but I know the light of the world. I know that this is a fallen world, but I know the one, the healer, the reconciler. I know him. This is the time for God's people to say, Lord, give me my mountain. Give me my hill country. You've promised it. It's time for abundant life in the church to share the good news so that the lost world will know that there is eternal life waiting for those who turn from their sins and turn to Jesus as Lord and Savior. Y'all bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment. And all heads bowed and eyes closed as we get ready for a response from God's word. You know, I recognize this morning that all of us are in a different place in our lives this morning. Some might be Caleb's age or even older. Some of us are younger. But I know that not a single one of us wants to lounge around and waste our lives. And I don't know about you, but I, I pray that God would renew my heart and spirit and soul to follow him holy. Man, I want that to be said of me, that man, Brian sure would wholly follow the Lord. And I haven't. I've fallen so many times. I've been unfaithful to God over and over, but he's always been faithful to me. All my life, he has been faithful. All my life, he has been so, so good. That every breath that I'm able, I will sing of the goodness of God. How about you? And maybe this morning it might be a, a time for you just to offer yourself to the Lord and say, God, help me remain the rest of my days. Maybe you're 85, maybe you're 90, maybe you're 55, 45, maybe you're 14, maybe you're 10. Just to offer yourself and say, God, I want to be a passionate servant of yours like Caleb. I want to have that same strength, that same passion, that same vitality. Maybe you need to come and turn from your sins and trust Jesus as Savior this morning. Maybe you need to come and offer yourself as a living sacrifice on this altar. Maybe you need to come and, and just have prayer. Maybe you need to pray with somebody. Maybe you need to come and take that next step of obedience of faith. But I want to pray for you and pray for me, and I pray that this time will not just be a time just to sing a few refrains, but I pray it will be a time that will really meet with God this morning. Would you come? Would you surrender? Would you lay yourself before the Lord this morning? This is still the season of grace. Today, if you hear his voice. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this week. I thank you, Lord, for the word. And I just know without a doubt that you just laid this word on my heart this week and I didn't know what I was going to preach at the beginning of the week. I had no idea. And I don't know, Father, if there's somebody here, maybe many of us here, that, that need to be reminded that you still have us in this world. You've given us these days that they're a gift from you to not just coast, but to conquer. And I pray, Father, that, that there may be some of my senior saints here that just need a, a reminder that you still want to use them. You still want them to, to conquer the world around them in prayer and sharing the good news of joining you on mission and serving, making much of Jesus. Others of us that now's the time. we got the time to lay ourselves and say, God, please prepare me, strengthen me, renew me. Although my outer body's decaying and getting older, what matters most is you renewing and strengthening my heart, my mind. 
And so, Father, I pray that whatever your decision is to move us this morning, would Holy Spirit just convict us, draw us. And as always, Father, we want to just exalt you and give you the glory through it all. So prepare the way now as we come and offer ourselves unto you. For we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Would you please stand as we have a time of response? Would you come as the Holy Spirit moves you this morning down this aisle? Would you come. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, great mercy, our sin and our guilt, yonder the glories of our Lord, and Abby Grace, what's a missionary? Someone who goes somewhere to tell someone else about Jesus. Amen. Let's, let's bow our heads and then we'll get ready to be sent out. We're sent out, church. All right? Let's close in a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. Father, we are sent now. All of us are on mission with you. So I pray, Lord, this day, this afternoon, this week, that, Lord, uh, you would send us, give us spiritual eyes to go and to be that someone to know exactly what somewhere is and that someone else you put in our lives. Give us that boldness and that courage and that bluntness to tell them about Jesus. We love you. We thank you. We give you the glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen.